Hey, Charlotte County. This is Charlotte County Cop watching. We got another story of a, a BS and or a rant. Uh, this is a story in the Charlotte County Sun, as you see here today, and it's and it's about opiate abuse in a silent, deadly uh, epidemic. And uh, before I even uh, read it, uh, I went off on a rant, and it's on the other page here. Uh, but you know, my point is the uh, what. If you didn't have this war on drugs, there's actually a couple countries that got sick of the war on drugs because they seen how it actually made it worse. And if you just freaking legalize the crap, guess what? All this stuff goes doesn't go away, but it almost disappears, man. One of Nixon's advisors already admitted that uh, they started the war on drugs because they were sick of the hippies that were protesting the war. So one way to get the hippies was to... Boston for drugs. So that's why he started the war on drugs. They made everything freaking illegal and started busting people. Uh, but the other reason why I went on a rant and flipped out on this article too is, um, you know, that's what's bull crap. You get a war on drugs, you know, suppo supposed, you know, street legal, illegal drugs, right? Are you guys aware that uh, uh, it's, it's actually pharmacy drugs that are literally making exact replicas of the stuff that's on the street they're literally making pharmacy grade crystal meth pharmacy grade uh heroin all of that stuff just under a different name and it's freaking pure this stuff is worth more than the stuff on the street it's so damn good so this is what is my rant and what pisses me off is that uh you're gonna war on drugs and the illegal stuff on this on the street but if it's pharmacy, hey, then that's fine. You know, that's for, you know, and this is where I also go into the rant is uh, is that it's the old farts that love this war on drugs, man. It's like they grew up with freedom and less taxes, good money, and then they started this socialist fascist stuff with uh, pensions and retirement and all that crap. By the way, that is in a real capitalist society, that's not real. If you don't save up for yourself, you don't have that crap. And as you've already seen in many places in America, uh, you know, these cities and counties that tried it went bankrupt. Uh, the companies that tried it went bankrupt or had to get rid of all of it. It does not work. It's robbing Peter to pay Paul. It is socialist fascism. So now you got all these old farts, you know, that love the war on drugs, the unconstitutional military police state. But what's really effed up? is they're on drugs man a, a drug is anything that's mind altering and mood altering and uh guess what these freaking drugs are ungodly mind altering mood altering they're legal because a pharmacy made them and they were prescribed so that's fine if you take it but if i have the street legal the street stuff that's illegal i'm gonna have to ruin your life and your family's life and etc etc so uh you know i like one of the jokes uh, and i don't like it too on uh online that talks about the most the da most dangerous thing about pot is cops and sheriffs and the feds and etc etc man i used to, i used to smoke weed i used to sell weed everything i never got in trouble like i did on another drug which is legal that the old farts do which is called alcohol alcohol absolutely is a drug you have to freaking do so many things to extract the alcohol from the green and all that other crap it's not even funny not even funny so like i said it's mind altering mood altering you know what you know what else these old farts are on tobacco man that is a drug oh my god so addictive it's not even, but you know that's that's fine it's legal so they can do it you know what if we started making alcohol illegal again let's let's start making their scripts illegal again because they are meth they are heroin etc etc all those bad drugs that they want us to be busted for and and now we have the biggest freaking police state in the world. We have the most people in jail and prison than the whole freaking rest of the world. And we're supposed to be a free country. That is so messed up. And then let's talk about the other drugs that these uh, fat old farts are on. That, uh, you know, they say, oh, we're good. We're, in a, we're, we're not drug addicts and or uh, whatever. Well, guess what? You fat piece of craps are addicted to food now. Because... Uh, you just are anything that's mind altering mood altering and you know that the food is it can be used as mind altering mood in fact all actually there's so many freaking chemicals and then now it really is mind altering mood altering in fact i'm finding out these uh, fake sugars 
are so mind altering, mood altering that your body literally thinks that they're sugar and that's how even if you drink all that diet soda, you're still going to get diabetes because your brain thinks that it is sugar. It still reacts the same way. So a drug is a drug is a drug. And making everything illegal is total bull crap, man. Uh, it it makes everything, you don't think the cops love it? They're, every single time, oh, let's make it illegal. Okay, great, I love it because then I can bust more people and get advanced and make more money. And ri That's another thing. You want to know who's ripping off the public. It's the cops, it's the sheriff, it's the court, it's it's the probation, it's the jail, it's the prison, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You you are now the new uh, industry of America. We gave away all of our jobs to uh, to China, so we thought, hey, let's create a mili unconstitutional military police state and make the people the new industry. Wake up, man! This is this is all bull crap. Look up the countries that finally woke up and said, this is, this is not working. America is pushing this crap, drug war, uh, worldwide, because in the end, that's what they're pushing for, is a freaking police state worldwide. One world government BS. Uh, it's it's nuts. It pisses me off. And like I said, you know, in, in, the, in these old parts that pushes it, it just pisses me off. You guys had a good life. You had freedom, less cops less taxes and now you want this ungodly military police state socialist fascism where everything is being taxed everything is illegal and and you guys got the good life that i read an article most people are coming down here uh that are retired government military uh or, or just regular job when uh when some of the jobs up north you know in uh, these places where they did have the uh retirements and all that crap are coming down here with two million dollars the younger people can't even imagine what that you know that kind of money because these pricks literally in a way ripped us off so this is in the end what that what they're doing is they got theirs but f you i don't we want our military police state so we can keep ours screw you uh you know who cares if in the end uh, we lose all of our freedoms it's really sad it's really sick uh, and here's another thing to think of too. Any bootlickers, cop suckers that you know that think this is freaking great and funny, guess what? There's so many laws on the books now, uh, local, state, and federal. Those pricks that support this crap, you they are literally breaking three different laws just sitting there. You can literally take all the laws, and if you, and if you meet a cop sucker that's a cop sucker. Just break open the book and start busting his ass, because this is bull crap and it's out of control. This is why the war on drugs must end. It's actually the old farts that love this war on drugs on the younger America that are on drugs, legal prescription drugs. These drugs are so good and pure that they are the same as the street but pure and worth way more money. So while the old farts say we must have a full-blown unconstitutional police state on the war on drugs and have the most people locked up than the whole rest of the world and we are supposed to be free. We are not free everything is illegal now and it's the old farts that are on drugs prescriptions alcohol cigarettes food etc etc anything that is mind altering and mood altering is a drug and the old farts that want this out of control police state are the ones that are wasted. Opioid abuse. A silent, deadly epidemic. By Bill Jones. Sun correspondent. It's called the worst drug abuse epidemic in history. It's a rapidly increasing heroin abuse death rate, exponentially exacerbated by synthetic derivatives like fentanyl and carfentanil. This escalating epidemic is quietly killing Americans in record numbers. Florida is no exception when it comes to opioid addiction and deaths, nor are Charlotte, Sarasota, Collier, Lee, and Manatee counties. For example, Charlotte has the third highest fentanyl death rate in the state, behind Sarasota, which is second, and Manatee, which is first, according to a recent report by the state's Medical Examiner's Commission, which reviewed 2015 cases across Florida. According to the New York Times, opioid addiction is America's 50-state epidemic. 
it courses along interstate highways in the form of cheap smuggled heroin, and flows out of pill mill clinics where pain medicine is handed out like candy. It has ripped through New England towns, where people overdose in the aisles of dollar stores, and it has ravaged coal country, where addicts speed dial the sole doctor in town licensed to prescribe a medication. Public health officials call it the worst drug crisis in American history, killing more than 33,000 people in 2015, with overdose deaths nearly equal to the number of deaths on the highway. For the first time, deaths from heroin alone surpassed gun homicides. More people are dying from drug overdoses than ever before, and most are tied to opioids. And there is no sign it's letting up. Recently, the U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration warned that improper handling of synthetic opioids like fentanyl and other fentanyl-related compounds has deadly consequences. Synthetics like fentanyl and carfentanil, often disguised as heroin, according to the DEA, are crazy dangerous. They can kill you. Fentanyl is 50 times more potent than heroin, and carfentanil used as a tranquilizer for elephants and other large animals is 100 times more potent than fentanyl. They can come in many forms, including powder, blotter paper, tablets and spray, and can be absorbed through the skin. The powder can be inhaled accidentally. Babies. The epidemic is also leading to the opioid addiction of babies in the wombs of drug addicted mothers. According to the National Institute on Drug Abuse, every 25 minutes a baby is born in America suffering from opioid withdrawal. This spurred the Florida Department of Health in Charlotte County to host a community gathering in October on opioid addicted babies led by Bayfront Health Port Charlotte nurse Diana Stark of the hospital's neonatal intensive care unit. Babies born to opioid-addicted mothers, she said, undergo a withdrawal symptom known as neonatal abstinence syndrome. They are more likely to be born with low birth weight, have breathing and feeding problems, seizures and usually have to stay in the hospital longer. Also, she said, like other drugs, Opioids can cause your baby to be born with birth defects or present a higher risk for infant mortality. She said that with prescription and painkiller drug use reaching epidemic levels in the last decade, there is a critical need to focus on opioid-addicted babies. Drug-free Charlotte What's going on here, the son asked Diane Ramsier, executive director of Drug-Free Charlotte County. She had plenty of answers. For one, she said, Drug dealers are savvy. They know marketing. When the state legislature in 2010 put the kibosh on flourishing pill mills, which were freely selling pain relief on street corners throughout the state, this proved to be a business boon for selling heroin and other opioid affiliated illegal pain relief concoctions, Ramsey Er said. Heroin was a lot cheaper and much easier to get than pills, she said. There was access and availability. The opioid business began flourishing, and it still is. A concern in the region is more youth graduating to these drugs. That's why the group values providing as much education as possible. The goal of Drug Free Charlotte, according to Ramsier, is working with youth, to prevent addiction in the first place, concentrating on gateway drugs like alcohol, tobacco, and marijuana. After age 16, she said, research indicates that one in six early drug users turn to addiction as adults. Drug-free Charlotte programs cover parents and students from kindergarten through high school in Charlotte schools. Ramsier calls them protective factors, designed to instill community values and healthy choices and life skill training among youth. They're based on feedback from parents, students, and the community, she said. Although not one size fits all. One principal program is DeFi, where students make a commitment to defy drugs, and validate their commitment in the future through drug testing. Focusing on the gateway drugs, she said, Charlotte high schools are headed in two disparate directions one better, the other troubling. In a survey in 2000, 54% of students said they used alcohol. Last year, it was 27%. It's still too high. Ramsey Er said, but we're improving. Last year, marijuana use was up, with 26% saying they had used. 
she said that's opening the door to more potent drugs and drug addiction in the future. Not everyone agrees. For example, the U.S. Attorney General has said prescription opioids are a gateway to heroin abuse. One of drug-free Charlotte's school programs in middle and high schools involves brain development, including decision-making and impulse control. Kids are shaped by their environment, Ramsey-er said. We want to change their perception that everyone's doing it. Law Enforcement Both Sarasota County Sheriff Tom Knight and Charlotte County Sheriff Bill Prummel, reviewing for the Sun their greatest challenges for 2017, singled out the opioid epidemic, particularly the expanding threat of lacing heroin with fentanyl and carfentanil. Knight said his challenge is continuing to find ways to protect the public from the opiate epidemic. His office has released public service announcements to increase awareness of the problem, specifically created to emphasize that heroin seized locally is more dangerous because it contains fentanyl or other deadly substances. Communities that are seeing a surge in overdoses and deaths from heroin or any other substance cannot arrest their way out of the problem, Knight warned. This is an educational campaign with the goal of saving lives, period. Prummel, in an interview, agreed with Knight that arrests no longer can stem this rising opioid tide. Education and prevention are critically important, he said, and life-saving. You think you're taking heroin, but it's been laced with fentanyl or carfentanil. You're dying. You're dead, he said. Beyond health and mental health effects of drug use, he said, is the problem of crime, with a direct, 90% correlation between drugs and crime. One answer, he said, is identifying sources of the drug and disrupting the flow. He's a member of the U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration Task Force that's working on the source problem, and is chair of the Florida Sheriff's Association Task Force, working with the state legislature and considering a statewide plan to combat the epidemic. Education, he said, is vital, when the perception of harm goes down, use goes up. The department is partnering with drug-free Charlotte County, of which he is chair, with some 20 programs in the county's schools, and with its Junior Law Enforcement Academy, among others, to strengthen bonds between police and area youth. One program Prummel started last year is the Drug Addiction Recovery Initiative Decide to Make a Change. Choose a Meaningful Life Without Drugs. Through which drug users can take their drugs to any deputy or sheriff's facility without fear of arrest. The department then assists the user in seeking treatment. It is based on a similar program in Massachusetts, which brought in hundreds of users, Prummel said. But even with postcards, announcing the initiative, given every person who bonds out of the Charlotte County Jail, only a handful have responded here. More awareness of the program is needed, he said. These photos provided by the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation show fake oxycodone and Percocet pills that are actually fentanyl. Fentanyl is sometimes placed in tablets of counterfeit prescription drugs, but also comes in the form of patches, powder, and even sprays. Even minute amounts of fentanyl can be deadly. Tennessee Bureau of Investigation via AP. The Opioid Overdose Capital of Florida. By Jessica DeLeon. Bradenton Herald. As the year begins, local law enforcement continues to battle the heroin and fentanyl overdose crisis plaguing southwest Florida. But the question still looms, why is Manatee County at the epicenter of the epidemic? Authorities agree on one thing, they wish they had the answer. In 2015, Manatee led the state with a fentanyl death rate of 22.9 per 100,000, with Sarasota County second and Charlotte third, and a heroin death rate of 14.31 per 100,000. Many cases in 2016 are under review so there's incomplete data but investigators have continued to see the emergence of synthetic variations of fentanyl and now specifically carfentanil that led to more deaths than heroin and standard fentanyl combined. Confirmed fatal overdoses for 2016 include all cases from January through June, and some cases from July through September, according to Chief Medical Examiner Dr. Russell Vega, of the 12th District, which includes Manatee, Sarasota, and DeSoto counties. 
analysis of the data for 2016 isn't close to being finished because of standard delays associated with waiting for final toxicology results. As of late December, fentanyl was confirmed present in at least 18 fatal overdoses in Manatee County while heroin was confirmed in at least 9 deaths in 2016. Fentanyl is a powerful opioid painkiller 100 times more powerful than morphine that is often prescribed to cancer patients. Carfentanil which is 10,000 times more powerful than morphine and is used as a tranquilizer to subdue large, exotic animals such as rhinos, elephants, and hippos has been confirmed in 43. Fatal Overdoses in Manatee County in 2016 Only two other synthetic forms have been identified in confirmed fatal overdoses. Of those cases, acetylfentanyl was found in three deaths and furanylfentanyl was found in two. Creeping back up although it really never left cocaine has been found in 44 of the confirmed overdose deaths. This is a community problem that we can't arrest our way out of, said Captain Todd Shear, commander of the Manatee County Sheriff's Office Special Investigations Division. Still, he is grateful for the community and its efforts in response to the crisis. We have come a long way in the last two years, Shear said. Since law enforcement remains on the front lines in the battle against the overdose epidemic, educating law officers on addiction has become essential. Our focus has never been on the arresting of addicts, Shear said. We want addicts to get the appropriate help. Efforts to cut demand. As Manatee County continues to lead Florida with the most deaths per capita involving heroin, fentanyl, morphine, or cocaine, law enforcement is working closely with treatment facilities and local hospitals, according to Shear. They need support and the resources to help these folks, he said. But while law enforcement has not determined a reason why Manatee County has been hit the hardest in Florida by the epidemic, Shear said some factors have been identified. The first factor was the crackdown this decade on the pill mills. Manatee County had a substantial number of pain management clinics, he said. And research has found that people closer to the poverty line are more likely to abuse heroin than others. It was very easy in our area, to get pills, not to say that it wasn't in other parts of the state, Shear said. Our demographic makeup here in comparison to other areas is another contributing factor. I really wish I had a definitive answer. Bradenton Police Sergeant Shannon Seymour, a narcotics unit supervisor, says the solution is not one that law enforcement can arrest its way out of. Supply and demand, Seymour said. People aren't selling if people aren't buying. Drug trends, like everything else, are based on the want of the users. Bradenton police officers try to pass out information to addicts about where they can get help. It all boils to the community coming together, making arrests where we can and working with the treatment centers, Seymour said. Hundreds of cases. By the beginning of December, with reports still incomplete, law enforcement agencies in Manatee had responded to at least 1,300 suspected overdoses. The Sheriff's Office has been working closely with the Bradenton and Palmetto Police Departments, sharing intelligence to go after dealers and help cut the supply. This past summer, law enforcement and the medical examiner's office identified a pattern in which overdoses spike in the summer months, with July being the most deadly. This year the summer spike spiraled so out of control that at times Manatee County's morgue was over capacity and bodies had to be stored elsewhere at a cost. We are hoping that it stays quiet, Shear said as the number of overdoses again decrease going into the winter months. Shear said local law enforcement has not been able to identify the reason for the summer spike.
Hey, Sheriff, we have a question about why your office, your intelligence division is investigating private citizens for criminal investigation that happen to be activists that are overseeing your d department. Why would you have your intelligence division investigate private citizens? We have done... Sir, we don't hate anyone. We love freedom and we love American people. And government is out of control. That's why you're seeing such a revolt nationwide. Why can't you just answer, why is Susan Edwards, your intelligence uh, division, investigating private citizens? This should not happen. Are you here to apply for a job? Uh, possibly I might be applying for a job, but that's irrelevant to my question. Why would you ask that question? I'll enjoy the fair. Okay. Excuse me. Excuse you? Excuse me, sir. So those of you that have wow. been on a bike before... We're Sheriff's getting a little too pushy. Is, is you work for fun. us, uh, uh, Sheriff. In just keep that in mind. Way. At one time we respected you, but not with that type of attitude. Thank you.